Minister at Greenford Baptist Church and welcome to the third session of Sword Stance. Again, it's taking the Bible, which is the Word of God, which is seen as the Sword of God, and trying to apply it to our lives. And I, I use different um, formats in how we do that. I want to read to you a passage that uh, 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 Ephesians 4, verses 17 uh, to uh, 24. With the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you've learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupt by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. I was on annual leave last week and I walked back into my office, turned on my computer and it decided it wasn't going to work. It was in a perpetual rebooting loop. You sit there going, now if you're not computer literate like me, you're going to go, what? It was just per permanently going around and around and around. It just would not stop. It would go blue screen. It would go black screen. It would go white screen. It would go blue screen. It just perpetually would refuse to load up properly. That was my experience on Monday morning. You can imagine that really made an enjoyment to my return back to the office. So I decided at this point to do some research to find out what has possibly gone wrong with the computer. Is there a way of fixing it? Recognising that I've had computers go wrong before and basically what you end up doing with these computers is just getting rid of them. They've, they've finally given up the ghost. So in this particular case, I was not wanting to do that with the office computer. So having done some research, it would turn out that uh, it would turn out that there's clearly a fault with the operating software on it. And they said it, it's caught itself in this perpetual rebooting loop because there's something inside its software that it didn't like. And that was apparently what the problem was. So what was the best way to sort this out, apparently, was to uh, get it to reload the software again. How do I get my hands on this? Well, there's some certain buttons you push, apparently, and that you somehow get to uh, the internet, and it would then sort of download from the internet and update the software, and this eventually would make it work properly. There was a, and so the, the software uh, needed fixing. So it was after all this, why this was going on, and, and it took all day um, uh, to eventually, with lots of different tries, lots of different returning back, retrying, regoing. No, it's crashed. Go back again. Try again. Oh, it got a bit further. Oh, no, it crashed. Get back. You know, and it was like, keep watching this bar, keep going across, updating the software. It was whilst this all was all going on. I sat there with a sense of, actually, this is like us. We've got bits of faulty software. When this computer came out of the manufacturers, it came out working perfectly, I am sure, in its day. It's a very old computer. And it, it came out working well in its day, probably absolutely perfectly, like when God originally probably created us. It was to be uh, made uh, perfectly. Uh, do excuse the, the doorbell ringing in the background if you can hear it. Uh, it's not for me. I'm not rushing off to go and answer the door. I'm going to continue talking to you. So it probably worked really, really well. But of course, over time, things get downloaded. 
updates happen to software, sometimes they're not quite compatible, and then computers start to go slightly faulty and slightly wrong. And this appears what's happened uh, to uh, the office computer here. And that's like us. Over time, we grow, we get older, and, and we take on board bits into our software, our thinking and our spirit, that actually not compatible fully with how we were originally built. And so therefore for things slightly go wrong with us. And therefore then we become what we cast as sinful. We all fall short of the glory of God. And so therefore then we're not quite functioning at the full potential to which we could that our original manufacturer, God, designed us to be. I then sat there and I thought, so how do we fix our internal uh, software, our thinking, our attitudes, our thoughts? Well, it was almost like the computer, bizarrely enough. I realised the internet. We all hear the word internet. And for most of us, maybe, maybe it's just me, but as a lame person, I just tend to think, well, the internet's sort of out there. It's, it's there in the ether. I don't really quite know how it works. I don't know where, if it is, stored anywhere. We tend to forget that we think of the internet as just out there in the airwaves on different uh, uh, things. And it just seems to be, and we get access to it by these things called computers or mobile phones or, or, or whatever device you might be watching this on. And, and it's like us. We, we, we tend to think the internet's out there. We don't really know how it fully works. We just accept it works and this stuff that appears on our screens just seems to come down via Wi-Fi, uh, 3G, 4G, 5G, still don't understand what that means, um, but it just appears and there is and we just accept that there it is and we don't question it, we just know it works. We all get frustrated when the connections aren't working, but it's there. And then I realised that's like us. The internet is almost like God for us. We, we, we recognise he's there. We don't fully know how he completely works, if that makes sense. We don't fully understand God's makeup, and that's good that we don't. What we do know is that he is love. And we also know he's a, a knowable God. He's knowable because he's knowable to us personally. Like the internet's knowable to us because we see it on our screens. So how do we deal with the faulty software? Well, it's like the computer. It was pulled down from the internet and that finally fixed it. It's the same with God. We don't sort of pull it down from God as such, but we allow the Holy Spirit to work on us and to change our operating software so it's more like its original design, more like how God wanted it to be. We allow the Holy Spirit to get rid of the, the, the faulty software that's in us, our faulty attitude, our faulty thinking, uh, to remove the viruses, as I say with inverted commas. We allow the Holy Spirit uh, to work in us and to reboot us uh, on a daily, daily basis. As it says in that Bible, uh, instead let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. We allow him to do that. We we don't continue in the same way, just putting up with the faulty software. We think, no, let's let's get a full download from the full creator. Let's get it from him. Let's allow him to change our thoughts and attitudes. And like the fault with the office computer, it can take time. As I said to you, all day, uh, I, I was getting, uh, I will admit, I was getting frustrated with that I could see the bar going, oh, it's almost there, it's almost there, and then it goes to reboot, and it would go faulty, and I was going, oh, it's like, just got there, and no, it's gone wrong again. And that can be like us. We, we can sometimes think, oh, I'm doing okay, oh, oh, and then we slip up again. We have a bad attitude or a bad thought. There may be the same recurring one that we're really trying to get rid of because we, we can feel that the Holy Spirit is saying, this is incompatible with the rest of you. This is causing you to not operate at the full um, uh, uh, and become the full potential you can in Jesus Christ. 
and we can recognise that in us. And we just get, and then we get, oh, one more step back. Now, do you give up? Do you think I'll blow this? I can't be bothered. I might as well just sit like this. If I'd felt like that by the computer, I, because there was at one point, I'm, oh, I've had enough of this. There's something wrong with this machine. Completely, it's had it clearly. I, I almost gave up on it. Almost decided actually, this is not going to get fixed. But I felt, no, 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 I actually prayed over the computer, yes, before anybody discussed, did you pray? Yes, I prayed, I prayed. Uh, there was literally, I was praying, come on, Lord, come on, Lord, you can do this, come on, come on, come on, come on. And eventually it got fixed. And that's the same with us, we must persevere in our walk with God. Keep going, don't give up on yourself. Don't believe that God's given up on you, because he most certainly hasn't. So he understands that these thoughts kick in and come in. He wants to carry on. The Holy Spirit wants to continue to refresh, renew our attitudes. He wants to, as it says in verse 24, put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So, I don't know how your operating software is. I don't know uh, what you might be struggling with within yourself. What I do know is, that you have easy access to the Holy Spirit, to the Word of God, and He wants to download and repair and sort out your operating software completely. Give Him that opportunity. Don't allow yourself to be a faulty computer who needs to reboot all the time. Just keep going. He's got you. He's the true creator. He's the best computer programmer you could ever have. He wants to sort out your attitude and he wants to sort out your thoughts. Why? Because he believes in you. He will never give up on you. Keep going. God bless to you.